to get started. Today we are pleased to welcome Mr. Mizutani, the Vice Council of Japan here in Miami. I will mention for the record the major contributors to the event that Mr. Mizutani has been kind enough to join us for, and then we will pres uh, turn proceedings over to him for a brief word before we begin the process of forming a simulated treaty between the United States and Japan the details of which I will explain during the negotiations in the interest of time. The project that we're going through today represents the efforts of nearly a dozen classes in eight separate subject areas. Significant contributions to our U.S.-Japanese treaty project include, but are by no means limited to, Ms. Chiho Cotton, the world languages uh, instructor uh, who is bringing us the Japanese language uh, students to serve as translators for the Japanese exchange students who will serve as the ambassadors of Japan. Myself, Mr. Patrick Griffin, Social Sciences, I have brought the honors government class to serve as both the State Department and the United States Senate. 
that will be advising and consenting to this treaty. Mr. George Rodriguez Walling is the social sciences head who is here today. Mr. Uh, Ms. Lola, uh, sorry, Ms. Lori Scola is the world languages head, also with us today. Uh, Ms. Page, uh, Ms. Page Viola is the ninth grade honors English instructor. She has her class here representing the local newspapers of the respective senators present in our Senate. They will be interviewing the uh, senators and determining whether or not they get reelected after this. Uh, Mr. Gabriel Medina, social science, has brought the 10th grade U.S. history class to serve as the national press with assigned points of view for those press uh, respectively. Dr. Mario Kubas of the Social Sciences has brought an anthropology observance unit to do some field work. He will also be uh, recording the event for later review by his anthropology classes to look at the human interactions in such a large and multicultural event. Uh, Ms. Rod uh, Ms. Monica Rodriguez and Mr. Mike Silver, whose classes are covering events from the school yearbook, uh, newspaper, and television production perspectives, respectively. Uh, Mr. Dean, uh, Mr. Dean Morell, who's helping us with computers and whose student has actually custom designed a Java application for this project, which he did in less than a week's time. That student is Mr. Louis Vera, who is in the 11th grade, designed this in Java uh, to our custom specifications. So quite a bit of credit is due to Mr. Vera. Uh, special thanks also to Mr. John Kratulis, Mr. Frank Steele, Mr. Jonathan Schoenwald, and Mr. Ruben Valencia for the use of these facilities and for bringing together a population that is capable and willing to do such a wonderful interdisciplinary project. So at this point, I would like to turn things over to Mr. Mizutoni, the Vice Council of Japan. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting for me today. So I really appreciate it to you, and uh, I'm look, looking forward to your debate. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry. 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 So Miss Cotton asked me to talk something, but uh, I think my speech is going to be boring. So let me finish quickly. <laughs> so my name is Seiki Mizutani. I'm working for Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. Uh, I spent four years in Tokyo. After that, I've worked in Boston, Bangladesh, and now in Miami as a vice consul. So when I was in Tokyo, uh, I, was, I was in charge of the national security about between the U.S. and Japan, something like that. So I can tell you something about the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty. Uh, as you know, the U.S. is the most important country for Japan in various, in various uh, fields, like uh, politically, economically, culturally, and also militarily. So according to, uh, according to the opinion poll, which is carried by Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, more than 85% are US citizens. So they answered that Japan is the most dependable country. And also, more than 80% of the US citizens answer that the U.S. and the Japan security treaty should be maintained in the future. I think uh, like, uh, under the dangerous security environment in Asia and Pacific region, the U.S. and the Japan security treaty is kind of a, um, indispensable for Japan. So, so before you debate about the base, let me give you some information. You guys, do you know how many bases in Japan? 10, 50, 100, 1,000? Uh, actually, 130. So among these, 75% are based in Okinawa. So you can find easily the many bases in Okinawa. So next, how much is the cost to money is a base per year. So Japanese government paid like uh, 600 billion per year for the base. I think it's a huge tax. So how many is the US military in Japan? About uh, 40,000 military in Japan. So among these, 25,000 military in Okinawa. 
So you guys have to choose the five states in for five states for five bases. So I like to judge the judge the quality, what is a bad, what is a good for the base, for the, your country. So I, I expect debate will really be lively library lively discussion today. Thank you for mentioning. All right, folks, for the sake of the mechanics of the thing, um, we are going to assume that um, Pres uh, Vi President of the Senate, uh, Joseph Biden, is not present today. I haven't seen him, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I'm going to assume that I am, as the member of the Senate who has served the longest in the majority party, because we only have one party in the Senate, room 305, um, <laughs> that I would be elected, as is tradition, the President pro tem. I'm also going to be the majority leader because I'm the guy that takes attendance. Um, so for that purpose, I'm going to run the show here. But at this point, you guys know what to do. We've discussed it before. At this point, please meet with your ambassadors and with your Senate caucuses and start negotiating this treaty. Remember, if you want anything that is not one of the bases as a writer on that treaty, you've got to write it down. Uh, but go right ahead. Get started. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and explain for the purpose of recording what exactly it is that we're doing. So go right, go right ahead, guys, and start negotiating amongst yourselves. When we have a treaty proposal, let me know and we'll go through it. For the purpose of recording, the way that this works, there are five bases that are going to be placed to simulate the importance of strategic locations. Military value is double the number of electoral votes if it is a border or coastal state. If it is a non-border, non-coastal state, it is worth the electoral votes of that state. Economically, the value translates not only to the state chosen, for, like, for example, let's say it was Kansas, but also to all of the states that border that state. So the economics transfers to all of the neighbors, not Arkansas. So if Kansas took a base, all of these states would economically benefit from having the uh, base in that area. They would not face any political implications because the base is nearby, but not actually in their state. So the objective for Oklahoma is to get as many of their neighbors to take bases as possible without actually taking one themselves, while at the same time getting the best possible total military score for their country. The objective for the Japanese embassy is simply to get the best military score possible so as to be the best ally possible.
the treat we have a proposal from Japan okay. all right this, this is the proposal all right ladies and gentlemen of the Senate as president pro tem I call the Senate to order because we do have a formal proposal uh, an initial proposal from the nation of Japan Japan proposes the defense treaty include the states of California Washington New York Florida and Texas I will give you a few seconds to debate amongst yourselves, and then we will have a formal vote whether it's to accept or reject the initial offering from the nation of Japan, or whether we wish to amend this before we accept it.
and gentlemen we have debate so the uh, speaker recognizes the honorable senator from the great state of Tennessee thank you all for joining us today um, I'd like to thank you for joining us and well we do appreciate your offer and we know that you're trying to help us um, we would like to propose a counter offer instead so instead of taking Florida we would propose that we take Tennessee because not only does it provide an inland state, but it also borders eight other states, which could serve for financial benefit in addition to more coverage for the Japanese. And also for Texas, we're still debating internally whether or not this is an appropriate uh, solution. And um, California, while it might seem initially that it would be beneficial, we do think that it would cause sort of an uproar in the, the country as well. And uh, as for bordering Canada, we do think Washington would be an interesting choice However, we don't know if we have in our power currently to um, accept that proposal. But New York, we are definitely considering, and we will get back to you soon with another offer. Thank you. So, in the interest of time, we're going to do a um, we're going to do a vote by acclamation. All those in favor of this treaty, bearing in mind that Washington is not permitted under the rules that we set up. Vote aye. All those who vote nay, say nay. nay. In the opinion of the chair, the, the treaty is rejected. We will continue negotiations. Gentlemen, we have uh, a speaker to recognize. The floor recognizes the honorable lady from this great state of Mississippi. Good morning. Um, we have come up with a counter proposal. A counter proposal. Um, we offer Tennessee and Georgia, since Tennessee borders eight different states. Oh, wrong one. Oh. <laughs> since Tennessee borders eight different states. And Georgia is right next to Florida, so you will get the benefits from Florida, and it's also on the coast, which is really, really, like, it, it'll help our country majorly since it's on the coast. Um, we do not want California because it's too big, and we are offering Hawaii since it's on the coast of California and on the coast of um, Alaska, so it gets some benefit. Um, Go ahead and mark what you're talking about. Okay, well, Hawaii is right there. Um, we do not want Texas because it's too big of a state. We're offering Colorado because it is um, in the middle of our nation and we don't have any coverage there. Uh, we do not want Washington because it doesn't really border many states that we like need help in. <laughs> and um, we also have another state right next to Canada, uh, which is New York, so we're taking this one out also. Um, and that is our proposal. Yeah. 
so. Not from you, but from right. everyone else. We got a majority, a majority vote. At this point, because this was proposed by the United States side, I'm going to take a quick vote, one at a time. Go ahead and just say your state and how you vote. And if it passes, we will formally offer it to Japan, who is then free to accept or reject it as they choose. So, just go right down the line, stand up, say you, what state you're from, and how you're voting. That is the necessary two-thirds, so that is formally offered to Japan for consideration.
てもいいですけど、みんな反対するから、向こうの言い分も聞かないと、私たちが意見ばっかり押し付けてもだめです。Okay? So... Oh my 
That is our new proposal. All right. Thank you, Mr. Senator from the great state of New York. accepted your proposal, assuming that the U.S. Senate then approves it. So, once again, with a roll call vote, identify your state and how you vote. New York, yay. Texas, yay. Georgia, yay. Rhode Island, yay. Arkansas, yay. California, yay. Massachusetts, yay. North Carolina, yay. Hawaii, yay. Tennessee, yay. North Dakota, yay. Florida, yay. Pennsylvania, yay. By unanimous consent, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen of Gulliver Schools and our friends from Japan. You have passed a defense treaty between the nations of Japan and the United States. I hereby call the Senate to recess. Senators, please report to the Capitol steps to address the media.